stomach at night? <laughs> I think I got that down, right? But Professor Cronin, we're in the hookup thing here. This is what we do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that later, that dating thing. But of course, as I tell students all the time, no, you're not. No, you're not. You're just going to be doing hooking up with money later, right? <laughs> Which, right, if you've heard me, that's closer to prostitution. So. <laughs> so here's the thing. Hooking up, we know, is a script. It's a social script that's going on at most colleges. There's another script, and it's this dating script, but a lot of people in colleges don't know that script anymore. Right? You've heard of it. You've heard tell of it. It's this, it's this ancient... This is ancient ritual that your parents and grandparents practiced. But here's how it would go. And I, I, uh, for a bunch of years, I taught this uh, sort of junior, senior seminar. It was like a capstone thing called Vertices. I don't know if some of you have heard of it. I used to talk about all kinds of things in that class with students. But one of the things that I talked about, which was what everybody wanted to talk about, was the dating assignment. So here's what I did. I gave a dating assignment. The first time I gave the dating assignment, people were like, oh, this is so exciting. Yes, I'm going to go on a date. Ooh, this is very exciting. But then, like, they didn't. So the second time I did this, I got smart. I got Machiavellian. I said, you cannot pass the class unless you go on a date. Can't pass the class. So, so then they got really freaked out, but they went on dates. So I got a lot of really great stuff from students, responses, because here were the rules of the date. Right? You must ask someone out in person. I know who you are. Because, <laughs> like, you all heard about this talk on Facebook, right? <laughs> like, I'm not on Facebook. I don't get I'm too old for that stuff. But Facebook, you're, like, stalking people. It's, it's, <laughs> it's social networking. I know. You all tell me it's like, I'm keeping in touch with people. No, you're not. You're stalking people. <laughs> It's a dating mechanism, you're hoping, but it's not really working out for you that well. So here's the thing. You have to, if you're going to do this dating assignment, which you should all do, you have to ask somebody out in person, but I allow the phone. Texting is the devil. Stop it. <laughs> so you, you need to ask somebody out, somebody who you have, in whom you have a legitimate interest, right? So this is not your best friend. This is not somebody you just are stuck in the friend zone with. This is somebody you really like and, and really could date. OK? So that's part of the rule. Then it has to be a level one date. And that's what I'm going to talk about later, a level one date. We'll talk about what that is. OK? You should plan the date yourself, ladies. And you should pay, ladies. If you ask, you pay. That's a nice thing. It shows care and concern, right? And then there should be no alcohol or physical interaction during the date, because it's a level one date. We're going to talk about what that means. The only physical interaction is what? An A-frame hug. <laughs> Shoulders in. Butts out. Right. That is appropriate for the end of a level one date. Here we go. Level one dating are the first three dates, right? Dates one, two, and three. Level one dating is reconnaissance work only. <laughs> you are gathering information. <laughs> you don't necessarily know if you like the person romantically. Maybe this is going to be a friend thing. Now, so a level one date is, I used to say 45 minutes to 90 minutes. And I would like to keep that. So sometimes I say 60 to 90 minutes. The important number here is 90 minutes. It should not go longer than 90 minutes. If it's longer than 90 minutes, you're tanking. <laughs> no one's interesting the first, on the first date after 90 minutes. You think you are, but you're not. <laughs> so what you need to do in that 45 to 60 minute period is try to kind of reveal things about yourself that are appealing, act like you care about the other person, gather information, <laughs> see what you think, right? <laughs> So a level one date should be sort of, it could be a daytime thing, right? It should be a daytime thing. Oh, it should not be a, want to go for a walk around the reservoir at 2 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. I, that is sketchy. <laughs> That's not right. Stop that. A level one date, the first date, a level one date is, I used to say that coffee place down there, but now they closed. How rude are they? <laughs> so White Mountain is a good first date. 
this lovely cafe here, not right now, but otherwise it's a good first, maybe it is a good first date for you. Look around. Uh, <laughs> A good first date is not far from campus because you don't want to have to like spend a lot of that 60 to 90 minutes in transportation, right? But like chill, where is that? Cleveland Circle. Cleveland Circle, perfect. Right, a student once said to me, Professor Cronin, I think this dating thing that you're talking about is pretty smart. I've been hooking up with this guy for a while and I think I should talk to him sober. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> That's a great idea. See, your successes in this business come, like, slowly. So she said, where would we go? I said, well, there's this city called Boston. She said, how would we get there? <laughs> Honest to God. I said, the tea? That's just a guess. She said, well, then we'd have to talk on the tee. I said, see, that is a date. Great. You would speak soberly <laughs> and get to know each other somewhere. But chill, it would be a great date because you'd be on the bus for a little while. Hopefully, you wouldn't see too many people you know. And you'd get there, and then the $15 gift certificate would pay for things. There wouldn't be any awkwardness. And then you'd go home, and it's chill. That's nice. So that would be a good first date thing.